Hello everyone and welcome to GSC at Home. My name is Celine and today we are going to be doing four fun experiments using only our body. For this, you can either be standing up or seated. Just make sure that you have plenty of space around you so that you don't bump into anyone or anything. Are you ready? Let's get started with experiment one. Clap your hands together like this and then bend your middle finger so that they're resting on the back of your hands. And we want to keep your middle finger there throughout this experiment. We are going to see if we can open and close each finger almost like they're giving each other a high five. Starting off with our thumbs. Open and close them together just like this. Nice and easy. Let's try the same with our pinkies. Again, nice and simple and easy. And now our index finger. Amazing. Finally, let's try our ring finger. It is so difficult, I can't do it. The reason that is so difficult is because in our four fingers, we actually don't have any muscles. We have something called tendons. And those tendons are controlled by muscles in the palm of our hand and our forearm. Now tendons are strings of strong connective tissue that pull, allowing our fingers to move. If you stretch out your fingers, you might be able to see the tendons coming out of each one. And every one of our fingers has separate tendons. But in most people, the tendons that allow our middle finger and our ring finger to move are actually connected together. And that's why in this experiment, we found it difficult to move our index finger independently. So let's move on to our second experiment and have a look at another tendon. For this, put your arm in front of you so that you can see the palm of your hand. Touch your thumb and pinky together and then flex your wrist up towards your body. When you do this, you might see a tendon pop in the center of your wrist. If you can't see that, try with your other arm, as sometimes people can only see it in one arm. I can see it a lot more clearer in this arm here. Now this tendon is attached to a muscle called the palmaris longus, which is located roughly about this part of our forearm. This is a muscle that we don't really need. It's here because our early ancestors needed it. Most mammals, like us, have this muscle but it is strongest in those animals that rely on their forearms to move around, such as lemurs or monkeys. But for us, this muscle is known as a vestigial muscle, as it has no clear function. Although it can be useful precisely for this reason, doctors can take this tendon and use it in reconstructive surgery to replace a damaged tendon without it causing us any problems. Now, if you don't see this tendon pop on either of your wrists, it means that you are one of the 15% of us that don't have it at all. And if that's you, then congratulations, you have taken an extra evolutionary step than the other 85% of us. Are you ready for our third experiment? Take both of your arms in front of you and point with your pointy fingers. Turn your hands so that your pointy fingers are now touching each other and you have a nice horizontal line. Keep your arms in front of you like this and we want to try and focus our eyes on a point just beyond our fingers or just above our fingers. And we want to stay at that point for as long as possible without blinking until something happens. So find a point behind your fingers that you can focus on and start to really focus and stare at that point. If you do this for long enough, you should start to see a double vision of your touching fingers. It may even look like you are touching an extra finger or have a silly sausage between your fingers. Now, if you have that double vision, start to slowly move your fingers apart from each other like this 
and you should see what looks like a floating sausage. This is known as the floating finger illusion and it tells us something about how our brain processes information from our eyes. We have binocular vision, we have two eyes that allow us to perceive a single image. Because of the distance between our eyes, each eye has a slightly different point of view. When you focus on your fingers, the lines of sight from both of our eyes are fixed on or converge at your fingers. But when you are focusing at a point beyond your fingers, the line of sight from each eye is parallel at your fingers. This means that your brain receives two competing images and struggles to make sense of them. One eye will tell you this is the end of the finger and the other eye tells you no, your finger is still going on. Parts of those two images overlap at the tips of your fingers. So your brain makes an image that is a compromise between the two and you start to see that double-ended finger between your own fingers or what looks like that floating sausage. If you close one eye, this illusion will go away. It only works because we have binocular vision. Our binocular vision helps us to tell how far away from something we are and helps us to do things like catch a ball. So we are on to our fourth and final experiment where our brains are playing tricks on us. Have you ever tried repeating a word or a phrase long enough that it starts to sound really weird and almost like it has lost all meaning? It is all to do with something called semantic satiation. Let's try it together and see how we get on. Let's try saying the word bottom 15 to 20 times out loud or in our head. Bottom, 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 bottom. It has lost the whole meaning. When we hear a word or a phrase, a specific pattern of nerve cells or neurons in our brain activate, which allows us to understand the meaning or the semantics of the word. When neurons in our brain are activated repeatedly, they start to get tired temporarily and stop responding. But we need the neurons activity to understand the meaning of the word. So when the neurons stop responding, we stop understanding and the words lose their meaning. And I'm sure you all will have experienced this before. And there you have it, our four fun experiments that you can do from home using only your body. Thank you for tuning in to GSE at home today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. We will try our best to answer them. Let us know which of the four experiments was your favourite and how you got on with each of them. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye.